What's up guys, I'm Brian Sakawa. you're watching He Spoke Style, and today we're talking about six expensive products that... So just to start off, I wanna say that just because something is expensive does not necessarily mean that it is a high quality item. There are many things that are vastly overpriced that are simply not worth the money. However, I tend to believe that in most cases, especially when it comes to craftsmanship as well as things that are meant to last, that you really do get what you pay for. That's been my experience over time and these next six items I'm gonna share with you definitely stand up to that test. First up is a pair of selvage denim jeans. Now, when you're talking about selvage denim, you are typically talking about a price point somewhere between two to 300 or $350. I have seen pairs for as low as around 150. Uh, J. Crew has a pair listed on their website right now for $148, and they can go as high as up to around $1,000. Now, I do not recommend you spend $1,000 on one pair of jeans, but I do think that in the two to $300 price range that you are going to get an extremely high quality item. So over the past six or seven years or so, I have been a fan of APC as well as Double RL. I had a pair of APC new standards that I wore to death, and my current Double RLs I bought about two years ago, and they honestly still look brand new even though I wear them all the time. The thing with selvage denim is that it lasts and it tends to also look better as it ages. So if two or $300 seems like a lot to spend on one pair of jeans, I would say to just consider the economics for a second. So let's say you spend $210 on a pair of APCs and that is the only pair of jeans that you have and that you wear. And then let's say that that pair of jeans lasts you from three to five years, which is not out of the realm of possibility for selvage jeans. Now contrast that with having to buy five pairs of $40 jeans that you have to replace every year. So if you do the math, you will definitely see that you come out ahead with a pair of selvage jeans. Next up I'm going to say is a category instead of a specific product, and that is what I would call boutique fragrances. Now there's nothing wrong with brands you can get at a department store. I personally love Ralph Lauren Polo Green, and I would just about put Tom Ford, whose fragrances I also love, into that sort of easily accessible, you know, I can just run to the mall and pick up a bottle category. But in terms of boutique fragrances, I'm talking more about like, I would say niche brands. So brands like Amouage, Arquis, Sirtrudon, Creed, Frederic Mall, Gamine, Nasamato, Rajas, Tamine, just to name a few. Uh, when it comes to details like fragrance, for me, having something very unique is important. I also try to seek out those fragrances that are in one way or another intriguing, you know, ones that might make people come up and ask you what fragrance that is that you're wearing. And I have found that fragrances from these smaller or more boutique brands tend to be the ones that do have those more interesting qualities to them. From a price perspective, we're talking, you know, anywhere between 150 to 350 or $400. Now, it is very important if you are going to spend the money on a fragrance that is this expensive that you know for sure that you are going to like it on your skin. So I would recommend either going to the brand's boutique or a specialty retailer to get a sample, or oftentimes you can go on the brand's website and order a small sample for like five or $10, which is much better than dropping $300 on a bottle that you find out later that you don't really like. Next is a custom or made to measure suit. Now recently in my Ask Me Anything video, there was a little bit of a dust up in the comments over how I responded to the question of what suit would I buy at the $250 price point? If you haven't seen that video, my answer was that I would not buy a $250 suit. I would keep that money and save up some more to buy something that was of a higher quality, preferably something custom or made to measure. So if you are buying a $250 suit, you are undoubtedly getting a fused garment. This is the cheapest and most inferior method of construction. Sure, you know, for a short period of time, it will look okay, but sooner than you would want, you're going to start seeing some bubbling where the glue is and the jacket will start to lose its shape. So what you want to buy in terms of a jacket is a canvas garment. Now there are canvas options off the rack, but unless you are very, very lucky, you are going to need some alterations. Same goes for the pants as well. So if you walk into a suit supply or Brooks Brothers and buy a suit off the rack, if you want it to fit really, really well, you're probably gonna be spending about one to $200 on top of the cost of the suit for the alterations. So even if you're paying five to $600 for a suit, if you add in those alterations costs, you're really getting into a much, much higher price than you saw on the price tag. So at that point, I really think you would do much better for yourself if you took your money to a reputable and well-regarded customer made to measure program. The benefits are you are getting personal attention, 
you are getting measured by a tailor, you are getting a pattern that will be closer to your actual body shape, and you have control over many more aspects of the finished product, including lapel style, lapel width, pocket style, buttons, linings, and so on. Plus, if you are working with a reputable made-to-measure program, whether that's at a brick-and-mortar location or online, you are going to get a level of service that you will not find at a department store. Now, one thing to mention is that not all made-to-measure or custom programs are created equal. It's very important to do your research before you commit to one. So, But rather than talk about specific programs here, I think that would be a good discussion topic for down below in the comments. The last thing I will say is that from a price standpoint, if it looks too good to be true, it definitely is too good to be true. So buyer beware. Next up is any product made by Frank Clegg. If you're not familiar with Frank Clegg, Frank Clegg Leatherworks is a family owned business from Fall River, Massachusetts. They specialize in extremely high quality leather goods. Everything is made right there in their workshop. When you get a Frank Clegg product, you are getting something with a classic design and timeless style. You are getting something that is expertly crafted with the highest quality materials, and you are getting something that will last, which is one of the most important things to consider whenever you are planning to spend a good chunk of change on anything. I personally own three Frank Clegg items. I have a small leather dop kit, a classic zip top briefcase, and the signature travel duffel. All three of these items have a quality and feel to them that is very, very special. It feels like something that is worth what you paid for it. And the best thing about quality leather goods is that they will improve with age. The leather will become more supple. It will take on a patina as you use it over time, which makes it an item that could easily become an heirloom in the family. Next are skincare products by Aesop. Now, a good skincare routine is one of those things that I think a lot of us guys uh, tend to overlook at times, but it is extremely important. For the past two or three years or so, I have been using almost exclusively products by Aesop. I have tried many different brands in the past, and Aesop is honestly one of my all-time favorites, and that is because I have not found anything as good or that works as well for me as Aesop stuff does. Currently, I use the Resurrection Hand Balm, Classic Shampoo and Conditioner, the Coriander Seed Body Cleanser, the Moroccan Neroli Post Shave Lotion, the Amazing Face Cleanser, that's actually the name of it, and the Mandarin Facial Hydrating Cream. Price for each item ranges between $25 and $50, which might seem like a lot, especially considering the size of some of the items. Um, I thought that initially as well, but do not let the size fool you. I can tell you from experience that this stuff will last much longer than the size of the packaging might lead you to believe. My final pick is one of my favorite shoe brands, and that is Belgian Shoes. Not any shoe that calls itself a Belgian shoe, because there are others that call themselves Belgian Shoes and have a similar look, but I'm talking about the original Belgian Shoes at 55th and Park in New York City. There is a book that I read called Deluxe, How Luxury Lost Its Luster. I'll put a link to it down below in the description. And that book talks about how luxury goods have changed over time, in particular, in how they are manufactured. When we think of something as an old school kind of luxury item, we typically think that it is made with very high quality materials and that generally it's made by hand. That's not the case for a lot of big name luxury brands anymore, but there are some brands that still do everything by hand and Belgian Shoes is one of those brands. Beyond the craftsmanship aspect of Belgian Shoes, there is also the comfort factor. I personally own three pairs of Belgian Shoes, a black suede Mr. Casual, a black watch plaid Miss wool Mr. Casual, and a patent leather Henri. And I can tell you from experience that these are the most comfortable shoes that I have ever worn. In the realm of expensive shoes, these are not really on the super high end, though they are certainly expensive shoes. Prices range between $465 to $490. So there you have it, six products that I think are totally worth every single penny you would spend on them. So what do you guys think? Leave your comments below. And if there are some expensive products you think are worth the money, definitely leave those for everyone to consider as well. Thumbs up if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, thanks for watching and stay tailored.